Hey everybody, good morning. It's a beautiful day. It was like 40 degrees when I got out of the house today and it's already warmed up a little bit. I'm just down to a sweatshirt. But today I have something a little bit different for you. It's not a tree climbing video, but we are going to take down a bunch of trees here on this project. And it's going to be quite the ordeal for just one man, just me by myself. So stick around and I hope you enjoy the video. So what we've got going on here is a lot that they're going to build a house on. They're actually going to build the house up over here somewhere, but they want to get rid of all these trees, uh, minus the ones with caution tape on them. Uh, but they do want this big silver maple gone. Then they need some trees gone over here, some stuff gone down over here by the pond, and I think that one dead one over there gone. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get all of it on the ground today. And then tomorrow I'm going to go rent a big old 18 inch chipper and we're going to jam it all through the chipper. And I'm hoping I can get it, most of it done in like two days, maybe two and a half, but definitely one day of cutting, one day of chipping, and uh, we'll see how it goes. I do have the excavator here with me today, which will make things a lot easier. Um, there's no way, no way I could ever feed an 18 inch chipper efficiently as just a, you know, one man, you gotta have something to feed it. So um, I'm hoping that'll definitely make things possible. That's, that's what I counted on when I estimated the job. So I think we've got somewhere around 30 or 40 trees that need to come out of here. Uh, you know, nothing crazy big except that one silver maple. A lot of spindly little stuff where I can probably stick the whole tree in and it'll eat it all up. Um, so I'm thinking it'll be a pretty good couple days here. above and beyond what we're required to do here today. All we need to do is get these trees down and leave them cut about waist high. Somebody else with a bigger machine is going to come pop all the stumps out when they dig the basement. <laughs> I sent that one kind of against its will to keep it out of the other trees because it was tall and it would end up in either these walnut trees over here or something down there and there's just no reason to tear up things we don't have to. So uh, the rest of these should be pretty easy to get to go exactly where we want them, at least I hope. On that last willow tree there, I made it kind of a narrow notch because it looked like there was some metal in that tree with just all the wounds on it and everything. And there was, there is evidence of there being fence nailed to trees in this area on this particular lot. And so I made my notch narrow trying to avoid uh, metal and it backfired on me completely. And so consequently the thing leaned over and the hinge didn't break. So that made it for a little bit more dangerous than it really had to be. But lesson learned.
I'm just about to cut this cherry tree down. There's this old locust fence post here. It's always amazing to me how long these things last. And I mean, it ain't the sturdiest thing, but it's still standing. So we're gonna cut this tree uh, above this post because with there being wire this close to this tree, there's a good chance there might be some in there. And uh, that would not be fun. We got lots of cutting yet to do. <laughs> This one might be a little bit more fun. This this main portion, there's a union right here. This main portion is just pretty straightforward. We'll just send it as close as we can to this maple without tearing it up and land it with the rest. But this one here, it leans over and it actually leans over an oak limb and stuff. So I'm gonna get it, try to see if I can get it to come this way with nothing but gravity. All right, you can see that we're leaning up here into the oak tree. So I've got you mounted on the tree. I'm gonna cut below the camera and you'll have to see if this tree moves that way. <laughs> I don't think it did what I wanted to do. I had that a little too hard, too hard of an angle. And it kind of, I probably should have done a little more sawing so it used these hinge fibers instead of just tearing these out. All right, we want to get as close to this maple as we can, but without tearing it up. This tree stays, and we want to get this log that way as much as possible to make it easier to chip when the chipper's here. You survived. <laughs> well, this tree was used as an actual fence post. There's wire there, 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 full on hinge there. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this right up here. And the rest of that will get buried with the stumps when they bury the stumps. It's always a little bit of a disappointment. I think that's actually the first time I've ever, uh, I can't be the first time. It's been the first time in a long time I've actually hit steel on a stump. Here's the stain from it. You can see that there's a stain in there. And down in there, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there's a little bit of a, a wire sticking down in there. And that's what I caught. So thankfully I wasn't too much and I was able to finish the cut after we made a face cut and that was, was good, but <laughs> Why should I be surprised, right? You know, after hitting that wire in the last tree, I stopped and sharpened my saw, and it did kind of number on it. I was really hoping to get uh, get a whole season out of that chain, and it looks like it's going to be real close. But, uh, you know, I walked up to my next tree here, and <laughs> kapow, more wire. So I guess maybe I shouldn't have put that time into sharpening it right away. But that's okay. Win some, lose some. Hopefully this looks like it's pretty distinct. There's three spots, we can miss it. So, <laughs> we'll see. That wasn't too bad. I'd really like for this tree to go the same direction. You know, lay down over this way. Right next to that last one. It's kinda hard to tell though, which way it goes. We got this limb that reaches pretty far out this way with a little bit of limb weight on it but this thing is not central either it kind of goes a little bit back so we're gonna cut it we're gonna cut nice deep notch and we're gonna see if if she'll go on her own <laughs> Alrighty guys I let you down a little bit I'm sorry I got to cut in here and I just couldn't stop <laughs> And so I didn't film all of it, but uh, got a bunch of these trees out of this tree row or this fence row here. Uh, all the ones were leaning really easy and hard. I just flopped over there. Um, I did a little bit down here and, and cut down some really small walnut trees. Nothing exciting. 
scrubbed out some underbrush there. They want to keep just a little bit of border there between them to keep uh, the neighbor's house is right over there and they just want to keep a little bit of privacy material. So now that we got that out of the way, we're going to flop the stuff that leans that way. And there's a couple of fair standing trees in there that I just wanted to have wedges to get those over. So I'll film all that for you. <laughs> When I say these trees are in the fence row, I mean they were in the fence row. I mean, look at this thing. The fence row is in it, brother. <laughs> uh, we're just gonna cut it above the stake. I left that, well I let that hinge be way too fat, I didn't cut it off fast enough. I got sheepish and once it started to go, I started to get out of the way. I should have stayed here and cut this a little bit more. Gotta be confident, can't be too, too hesitant on stuff. Of course this big old piece of steel in here didn't make it any easier. <laughs> that looked like a burrow tree or something had a vine or something connected and it pulled on just enough that it it pulled it into our a maple tree down there that we're trying to save you can see it right there on the edge of what i've cleared right right there trying to trying to keep that tree nice we didn't hurt it but it brushed it and i wasn't satisfied with that i think it probably only got a couple tips i don't think it hurt a single thing but Anyhow, it's amazing how it just it doesn't take much to affect the tree as it comes down. It's, it just doesn't take much. It's a bad time to run out of gas. It's starting to look a little bit different around here. We got a dead tree out over there. We took out that whole fence line here. You can see there's still a big tulip tree there that they want to keep. Um, but all of them cherry trees are on the ground in both directions. Come over here, we got this oak that was there, a couple maples. Uh, on the other side here, there's a bunch of cherry trees down in there and that willow tree. And now it's time for the big baddie, the big silver maple. I, I got to cut this thing somewhere below that big limb stub right there. And I don't want to have some big massive piece of wood because I have to haul the big wood away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my notches just slightly below that thing and bore cut and try to fall this whole side that way and this whole side that way and use the force of the tree falling to finish off that union in there. I'm hoping it works. If it doesn't, all I got to do is run the saw down through there, which is simply unfortunate because, you know, the union's full of dirt and stuff like that. So... But I'm pretty sure it'll work. It is a little bit of hazardous because you know this tree leans all sorts of ways and there's gonna be stuff over top of us. Um, we'll do the best we can. I just put the 36 inch bar on the 500i. Um, it pulls it pretty good, at least through soft maple. I do run a skip tooth chain on it, but she makes, she makes a good time with it. I mean, it's probably not as fast as a 661 or something. But it's good enough. It's it's good enough that makes it not worth carrying around a whole nother big saw just to run 36 inch bar. So that's why I have it. Also, one other note about that is that that 500 with the 36 inch light bar is way easier to deal with up in a tree than a 660 with a solid core bar. So I'm not a big guy. That means a lot to me. <laughs> Uh-oh. 
I was really counting on that coming through. start cutting down through that union I was really hoping it would have popped off by now but I guess it makes sense you know we're not trying to try and just straight peeled off this this part is kind of you know it's not a traditional splitting force because the notch is so shallow it's wanting to you know what's holding it is a lifting force kind of here like a shear force and that's a lot stronger in this scenario so that was my dumb, dumb mistake. Should have thought that one through. I thought, ah, oh, shallow now she'll be fine. No reason to struggle making a deep one. Serves me right. Doesn't mean it was right. I don't know that I would repeat that experience. Oh, maybe I would. I don't know. You tell me in, your, in, your, in the comments. Was what I did here foolish? I mean, all experimentation comes with the risk, so we can ignore that a little bit. But, I don't know. I'd be interested in your thoughts. All right, now we're gonna, gonna make ourselves, we're definitely gonna make a shallow notch here so it doesn't go prematurely. And then we'll send it on over. There's nothing to avoid. It can't even hit my truck over there. We do need to make sure we get that rope swing out before we start chipping this thing, but should go pretty straightforward. Right? <laughs> Time to cut it up and make some wood pieces we can haul them away. I load up all my logs in a rush, but I'll put you up there to see them dump. There, got the chute blowing in a favorable direction, and we're going to try loading some limbs into it.
money trees, they can just shove them in and chip them, you know, they all fit. But naturally, right when I went to film, it quit. chipper overheated so I ran back to the house to get my blower and some tools to take this screen off so I can hopefully blow the radiator out good enough um, I think I chipped some elm limbs and I think you know they make that really fuzzy stuff especially when the blades are wow blades I mean knives aren't super sharp and these ones aren't so I think we plugged it up let's get this guard off and get this radiator blowed out I was looking at this and I noticed that these bolts all look like they've been off a few times. A lot of scratches on the washers and just wear on the corners of the bolt heads. So it's probably a fairly common occurrence for this machine. Just a full of sawdust and stuff. Doesn't even look like it was necessarily that Elma chipped. It was just time. But she's done. She's done a lot of work today. Made a lot of dust. So I guess that's fair. Man, this thing's only got 200 hours on. It's already beat up. So I figured out why this is a problem here. So I don't know if I'll be able to show it on camera, but each one of these fins, each one of these cells made by these fins is then divided in half by another fin, maybe three eighths of an inch down in there. So you can, you know, most radi radiators you can see through this one, you can't even see through it. So that's why it gets so caught up with, with dust and stuff. Now that should be figured out by now, I would have thought. I was afraid something like that might happen. I might not be able to blow the dust through. So I do have a little cordless shop back. We'll see if we can suck it out of there. As usual, there's like no access from the other side to blow the dirt, you know, through the radiator the way it should be blown. So we'll just do what we can here. And as I expected, at least halfway as expected, that's kind of a joke. Doesn't do much. It's so frustrating.
if it's not one thing it's another right i just ran out of gas so i guess i'm gonna go find some gas somewhere i'll be right back all righty we're back let's try this again <laughs> second that we could we did get everything done that we need to get done with the chipper so that's great we'll take that back tomorrow morning and then i gotta come back here for this excavator so i'll show you guys where we ended up with everything then but yeah it was it was a good day got a lot of work done a whole lot of work done i'm thinking we chipped probably close to 50 yards of chips that might be a little a little bit of a generous guess but I wouldn't be surprised if there's five truckloads here so see you in the morning alrighty we got the machine loaded up it's in the truck here and I just wanted to give you guys a brief uh, conclusion to what we got done here so uh, we took down that big silver maple right there there's a bunch of other trees all throughout this area one down the hill there one over there, one way over there. I don't know if you can see it. And then there's all of them ones in the fence row, and then some down here, and and that was that was the gist of it. Um, we had you know quite a bit of chips here, here. There's a bunch spread out in there. Some even shot all the way down the hill. Then there, at that stump, I popped some up too. And then you can see over there where I loaded the truck up. <laughs> I took uh, took some some chips to a friend of mine who was looking for a load, and he's close by, so I dumped them off to him. But got a lot done in a short period of time i think uh i counted up 70 stumps so i'm i'm pretty happy with that they're ranging in sizes from everything from you know probably 40 inches in diameter at that silver maple to you know there was a few few trees in there that were only three or four inches in diameter but either way for one man i feel like that's a satisfactory amount i don't know if i'll ever get that much done in two days ever again looks like we're all done with this job I certainly hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you on the next one.